Paul Bosch, who just promoted Houston and maybe some shows within 50 miles of Houston. And he would just bring in uh, different talent from different places. Mostly he would use the Mid-South talent because they had the t- had TV, <coughs> excuse me, in the town, in the town of Houston. But he would bring in Brody. He would bring in Flair. He would bring in Briscoe. He would bring in Dusty, Dick Murdoch, Wahoo McDaniel, uh, Johnny Valentine. He would bring in the top stars of the wrestling world, and he would use them every so often uh, in that Houston Coliseum there, in a big Coliseum. And he drew well, and he paid well. See, everybody that wanted to have a good week in Louisiana, Louisiana could be down, but you work Houston, that was your week. So you could go into Houston and make, <laughs> back in the days in the 80s, you could make five, six, seven hundred dollars in a night. That was a good payoff in those days. So hell, it ain't bad today. But uh, Mr. Mr. Bosch, and what was the question you asked me? Well, do you know what? Why don't we go with Bosch instead? Because you've worked okay. Houston a okay. few times here and there, haven't you? So was yes. Bosch, in your opinion, the best payoff man in the business? At the time, yes, by far. Because I don't know why he, he, he paid so He didn't have to. But see, a lot of promoters sh- should have been paying like that, but they didn't. And this was the, the formula they would use. Let's say you had, let's make it easy, 10 wrestlers on a card and a referee, okay? So you drew $10,000, okay? And it was a rule of thirds. 30% of that money was to pay for expenses. Not talent, but expenses, office expenses, and and taxes. And uh, other 30% was supposed to go to do talent, and then the other 30%, the promotion, that was their money. So if you took the $3,000 that the talent should have made, you divide 10 in that. So it's each wrestler should have made $300. But of course, they didn't come to see the first match. They came to see the last match. So the main event would probably get $500 each. First match would probably get $200 each. And that's the way they did it. But this is what they would do. And this is what the wrestlers used to say. The promoters get first count. We didn't know what the house was. We just had to go on what the promoters told us. Say up last, last week was $8,000 and the house looked up. Well, it could have been up or not according to what the promoter needed. You can see, oh, no, it, it just looks that way. It was, it's actually down, some, down, but it's not. But see, they get first count, and they take that money and just tell you what they want to tell you, and you have no recourse. That was why people have been talking about a union for all these years, because they would draw money, get first count, tell you something else, and pay you off on the lower figure that they would release. And a lot of times, they didn't release nothing. They just you just you just saw it on your check, whatever you made. Did, it's, it's a little bit of a shady business at times. Did you uh, ever hear the old story of how the promoters worked out how to pay the talent? Was they put all the money into a big basket, threw it up in the air, and whatever stuck to the ceiling, the wrestlers kept. Oh, I believe that. <laughs> I, I I do believe that. Now there's a lot of wrestlers that that, that got slapped around because of the payoffs. Brody was one of them. I don't know who he slapped around, but he snatched a few and they come up with some more money. And if a guy bitched about what he made and the promoter said, I'll make it up to you. Oh yeah. He may make it up the next week. He will give you some more money, but he's not losing any money because he just taken that money from the underneath guy, the early matches. He just take that money from there. So he couldn't lose. <laughs> 